everyone this is dr nakula mata from aspire mds today we'll talk about the pedigree analysis uh, which has been a important topic and has been asked in need in the recent years so we'll study like what exactly it means and how the questions are solved in this pedigree analysis now first of all you need to know that what are the patterns and what are the basics of this pedigree analysis so whenever you see this circle it means that it is it stands for a female and this square stands for a male and the patterns when we see like whenever it is darkened that means it is an affected individual and whenever it is not darkened that is not shadowed then it is an unaffected individual and if it is partially shadowed suppose if it is partially shadowed then it would be considered as an carrier okay so these are the things that the basic things that you need to know about from the pedigree analysis okay so now coming to different uh, concepts of how this diseases are uh, named okay so we first need to know there are certain things like uh, the autosomal uh, diseases and the x linked diseases okay as we know that autosomal disease they are uh, derived from the autosomal chromosomes and x links are uh, coming from the sex chromosomes okay then there comes to another pattern that, that is either it may be a dominant disease or it may be a recessive disease okay now when we talk about this autosomal and the x linked disease so whenever it is an autosomal disease it would always uh, there won't be any uh, what we can say uh, uh, partiality a mother and a father they can transfer the disease to either son or daughter in any of the cases okay in both the cases the mother and father can transmit the disease to the son and daughter okay whereas when we see this x linked disease in this case there we will see a specific pattern which is called as a criss cross pattern okay in this criss cross pattern what we can see that mother always transmits the disease to a son and father always transmits the disease to the daughter okay so these are the things that we can see in the autosomal and the x link diseases so this is how you can uh, compare that it is an autosomal disease or a x link disease now talking about the dominant and the recessive part see dominant whenever we see each and every generation either a male or a female would be affected then it is considered as a dominant carrier the dominant disease okay now this dominant disease this term is called as no skipping okay there won't be any skipping of the generation and if there is no skipping in the generation of the disease then it is considered as a dominant disease and if the trait or the disease is not following the pattern and it either it skips any of the generation then there can be a skipping then it is considered as a recessive disease so these were the basics about the autosomal and the x linked disease and how to know the dominant or the recessive pattern apart from this basic pattern there is on also one more pattern that is an x linked trait okay sorry a y linked trait the y linked trait in this only the males are affected okay because it is the the trait is carried on the y chromosome so it is carried on the uh, y and it is affecting the males in each and every generation so the three basic things that we need to know are covered in this slide now one more uh, pattern or uh, there are certain rules which will be following to see the uh, this uh, to solve this pedigree analysis that i will show to you that there are certain set of rules see what the rule one the, there are certain rules the rule one what it says that if the child is diseased one of the parent must be affected in case of a dominant disease okay so whenever a child is affected one of the parent must be affected then only we can say that it is a dominant disease rule number 2 that in case of a x linked disease the male transmits to daughter I, that means that it male do not any time transmits the disease to son and similarly it is vice versa 
So this is in X. X this is X. Rule number three, what I would suggest to you is always follow the pattern from generation three to generation one, or how many of, uh, of the steps are given. Go from the uh, the most recent generation to the above work. So you can know easily that what pattern is been followed in this pedigree. So we'll see certain cases and know about the uh, results of this pedigree analysis from whatever we have uh, seen up till now. So coming to the next slide, we'll see this example one and example two. Okay. In this example, these are the patterns we have already seen. This is the third generation. This is the second generation and this is the first generation. Okay. Now what we are seeing over here, a male is affected over here. Okay. Now the male is affected and the female is not female is not affected. Now in the very um, uh, next generation, that is the second generation we see in the uh, um, offsprings that they derive, uh, there are daughters which are affected. Okay. Here we can think that uh, uh, it may be a X link disorder, but uh, when we see the offsprings of this part here, the pattern, so it starts as a cross crisscross pattern. Okay. But here, when we see the male is also affected and the females are also affected, but basically we can see that the crisscross pattern is there. So we are confirmed that it is an X link disorder. Okay. From father to daughter, from daughter again to most of these offsprings which are affected, they are son okay now second thing either it is an uh, dominant or recessive so as each and every generation is affected the first generation the second generation and the third generation of springs are affected so it is a dominant trait okay so we can confirm that it is an x linked dominant trait which is shown over in example one pedigree now when we see the uh, trait two uh, there is pedigree analysis two example here the uh, one we talked about in the last slide that only males are affected see okay only males are affected so it is a y linked pedigree that has been shown over here similarly you can uh, solve various examples and solve it easily within fraction of seconds when okay in addition to this i have added some mnemonics that uh, would be easier to remember for each and every uh, trait and the disease which falls under that category so when we see the autosomal dominant category there is a, a mnemonic what you can uh, call it as above familial hypercholesterolemia cholesterolemia autosomal dominant hair. so in that v stands for von willebrand's disease we can see the familial autos uh, adenomatous polyposis we can see hypercholesterolemia adult polycystic kidney dystrophy uh, dystrophia myotonica osteogenesis imperfecta marfan syndrome the intermittent porphyria, neurofibromatosis 1 and 2, then we can see achondroplasia, we can see tuberous sclerosis, Huntington disease and the hereditary spherocytosis. So this all falls under autosomal dominant category. Now when we see the autosomal recessive category, you can uh, uh, remember it by a mnemonic that is fried puri or garam chawal must have. So here fried that is F stands for Frederick's ataxia. P stands for phenylketonuria, G stands for galactosemia, then we can see cystic fibrosis, hemochromatomesis, alpha 1 antitrypsin deficiency, we can see Wilson's disease, alkaptonuria, lysosomal and glycogen storage disease, uh, muscular atrophy, adrenal hyperplasia, sickle cell disease, thalassemia, and homocysteinuria in this autosomal recessive disorder so these are all the autosomal recessive disorders now you can remember the x link dominant disorders by ravi has gag reflex okay so r stands for red syndrome a stands for alport syndrome in most of the cases we can see that it is x link dominant also we can see v stands for vitamin d resistant rickets i stands for incontinentia pigmenti g stands for Gouffre Tsukara syndrome, A stands for Icardi syndrome, G stands for God syndrome, and X the, from the reflex goes for X linked dominant porphyria. So, this is the X linked dominant disorders, and we can remember the X linked recessive disorders by 
less hcg is detected clinically in a fragile woman so this is the mnemonic to remember the x linked recessive disorder here less means less nyhan syndrome hcg stands for hemophilia a b and hunter syndrome c stands for chronic granulomatous disease g stands for g6pd deficiency detected clinically in a fragile woman d stands for the shen muscular dystrophy c stands for color blindness a stands for a gamma globinemia f stands for fragile x syndrome and w stands for viscot andrich syndrome so these are various traits and the mnemonics from which you can directly uh, answer them when they are asked in your questions so just remember go through these tables once or twice just before the exam and this would be definitely helping you thank you everyone